Friends, the last 10 days have been filled with shocking events and disturbing images coming at us from all directions. Just last week, the nationwide death toll from COVID-19 rose above 100,000 souls lost in the pandemic. Days after that, national outrage boiled over the deaths of Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd, two black men killed in full view of the cameras. Ahmaud Arbery was simply jogging in a Brunswick, Georgia neighborhood about a four hour drive from our church when a man and his son chased him down and shot and killed him. It took more than two months for them to be arrested. George Floyd died on May 25th after pleading for help as a police officer pinned him to the ground with his knee on Floyd's neck. In the wake of these two deaths, rightful demonstrations of thousands of nonviolent protesters calling for justice have been hijacked by a few determined to sow violence and chaos, looting and destruction. Curfews have been imposed, National Guard troops have been activated, and the President has even threatened to invoke a rarely used law dating back to 1807 to ensure violent protests end, declaring that he would deploy, quote, thousands and thousands of heavily armed soldiers, military personnel, and law enforcement officers, end quote, to bring order. All of this is shocking, and the combination of so many disturbing events in such a short time is virtually unprecedented. So all of this has led me to ponder one question. What should we be doing about all this? We could join a march, but not all of us feel led to do that. Yet too often we've been outraged and shocked and disappointed by situations like this, only to go back to our same old ways of doing things once a crisis eventually passes. We should not let this happen again. Our nation deserves better from us than this. So I want to suggest some simple ways that we can all start to do better. With regard to the COVID-19 crisis, we need to continue fighting the disease with masks and social distance and dedication to the understanding that the disease is not yet under control. And so we must continue to observe these practices. Secondly, with regard to the American sin of racial inequality and injustice, I want to share a personal realization that I have had as one whose great grandfather was a slaveholder. I understand that this is not everyone's story, but it is mine. Because I am his descendant, I have inherited wealth that his slaves created, none of which went to the children and great-grandchildren of those enslaved. This is part of my economic privilege as a white person that I cannot pretend does not exist. But there are other ways in which our society advantages white people and disadvantages people of color. It is simply built into the way we do things. We who are white must learn to see these things. We have to stop pretending that slavery in America did not produce long-term benefits for white people to the long-term detriment of black people. It simply did. It still does. We have to open our eyes to see what systemic racism is, namely a set of official government policies and economic realities only recently and incompletely corrected that disadvantage people of color. We who have knowingly or unknowingly benefited from this inequality must stop pretending that it does not exist. Knowing that this bias exists and benefits us does not negate the fact that all of our families of every race have had to struggle to overcome obstacles in life that are unique to them. But we should know that acknowledging someone else's struggle does not negate our own struggle or mean that our own struggle is meaningless. Third, my call to action is that all of us resolve to move beyond simply saying, I'm not a racist or I don't see color. Refusing to be racist is an important first step, but an equally important second step is to become anti-racist, to actively work against racism and its malignant effects on our society. 
to work to help others abandon racism. So what are we supposed to do? First, I want to encourage you to read some important books during the remainder of this COVID-19 isolation. You will find a link to a book list posted along with this video. It contains books as well as films you may watch and actions you may take as well. But because this book list is long and addresses a wide variety of subjects that are a part of racism in America, you can pick where you want to enter the topic and with what subject. But because many of these books are hard to read and their content difficult, we would like to suggest a starting place for those who have never engaged deeply with this subject before and who would like company in this process. To this end, the staff will be offering a Zoom book discussion of the book entitled, I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. Through her life story, Channing Brown describes how she experienced racism growing up as a middle-class, evangelical, Christian, African-American young person. I think we can all benefit from her perspective. In John 15, verse 12, our Lord commanded us to love one another as He has loved us. Understanding others is an essential part of loving others. So let us seek to understand our neighbors. We need not fear this process because the Lord has promised that once we know the truth, the truth will set us free. And in this process of seeking the truth, we are never alone because the Lord Himself has promised to be with us now and until the end of the age. Finally, as always, if you wish to talk with me about anything that I have said in this video, if you want to share with me your own experience, I want to hear from you. I want to know what your experiences have been, and I want us to be able to have a conversation about this. I promise to receive everyone who calls and to cherish the stories you tell me because they will help me to get to know you and to know our community better. Let us try our very best to engage with this subject of racism in America to the end that we may grow closer together and that we may grow closer to our neighbors in the community and be a force for good here in our community surrounding Oak Grove. Take care.